Outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Something's a little wrong with, with this scenario, isn't it? I'm in Okinawa, Japan. Of course, Japan, but whatever. Okinawa. My first warm Christmas ever. And it is warm, it's not hot. It's like 20. Five degrees or something. The water is like, I don't know, 19, 20 or something. I swim, swam earlier. That's just why I'm not wear, just wearing these swim trunks for show. <laughs> so yeah, this week was interesting. Um, uh, yeah, uh, let's start from the beginning. Monday, I had a, let me see, the big grammar test, which uh, was important because I had to have 60% to uh, pass for the next uh, level. Uh, Tuesday was a kanji test, and on Wednesday was the speech contest, uh, also the last bit of uh, pronunciation. Uh, the speech contest was, uh, we had to write the speech, and you had to hold it, uh, hold the speech, I guess you say that. Um, my subject was uh, dirty words you can't say on TV, TV. I mean, <laughs> no, uh, dirty Japanese, pretty much. Dirty Japanese, I think I'm dirty Japanese, I really think so. I don't have the uh, papers with me here right now, so I can't uh, read it here, I have to do it uh, somewhere else. But yeah, um, so let's start with the beginning. There were, uh, oh yeah, and, and then on Wednesday, the, the first term of school uh, officially finished, and now it's vacation until January 11th, which is why I took this fine opportunity to go to Okinawa. Uh, for a real vacation, uh, my first true this kind of vacation since 1997, pretty much, when our family went to Turkey. And even then I didn't really go to a real beach. Uh, we just swam in the pool, where I actually learned how to swim, uh, which was when I was like 11 years old. Anyway, back to school. Uh, you know what I mean. The best part was that on the Monday grammar exam I got 185 out of 200, which is Okay, so 15 errors is not never fun to have, but it was, it wasn't 85 out of 100. It was 185 out of 200, which makes it 92.5 percent, which I'm actually really happy about because I, I've been uh, struggling to get over 90 points, which I was, which is what I want, and now I did on the big test that had uh, at least double uh, the uh, problems on it. And, and ironically also, it felt good that I um, I got the exact same score as Julia, the woman uh, who sits next to me in class, because she always gets higher than me in the regular uh, the regular tests, and uh, it's windy here, uh, regular tests and homeworks and stuff, she always gets over 90, it seems. I get usually 80-something, and a few times 90, but this time I guess I uh, buckled down in the right way. I, I missed some stuff, of course, most of which was just lack of knowledge. A couple of them were, which is a problem I have with the difference between uh, a transitive verb and an intransitive verb. So we had, there was like, the the bread is baking in the oven, and there's two words for that. There's the, if you're baking it, or it's getting baked, sort of. And I used the wrong one, because I actually didn't know the other one. I didn't couldn't think of it then, anyway. And the other one was like, uh, can you please lower the price? Uh, for me, or make it cheaper, or something. You had to. There were a lot of different the answers that could have been correct, actually. But I uh, 
my answer was like, this is so expensive, can you please, please lower the price? But I used the wrong uh, version of lower, also, that also has a transitive and an intransitive one. At least I know uh, from, there is a rule with, um, with the particles are always uh, confusing, because it's like, do we put O or GA? So it's this rule is, let me see here, it's GA TA O. That's my uh, the rule. Because jidoshi and tadoshi. Jidoshi is the stuff that you don't have control over, even though the word for it is jidoshi. And ji means self, so self but not control, I guess. And the other one, tadoshi, is stuff you do have control over. So when you do are controlling it yourself, you use o, because you're, you know, manipulating an object, I guess. And uh, when you don't have the control, you use ga. Like, um, it's the thing, the difference between watashi wa. Um, Boken no hajimeru, hajimeru. I'm starting the adventure. Or boken ga hajimatta. Uh, the adventure has started, which is in, um, in invokes the feeling that I didn't, I wasn't in control of it. It just happened, happened anyway. Like I got swept up in the whole adventure and everything. Um, so at least now I know that. On the kanji test, I did also well. I got 96 out of 100. And I had two errors, one, no, three actually. Uh, two of them were, uh, one of them I absolutely knew that I did when I did the test, well, absolutely, but I checked it right after and it was like, it was the country for horse, which looks like this. And But I thought it was it had to be two lines like this, and not just one. When it's a part of another kanji, like uh, in eki or uh, tetsu, I think, no, ken, ken, that's it. Um, it only has one, so I thought it's like okay. So when it's part with a, with another, it's one, and when it's all alone, it's two. But that was wrong. The other one was Furusato, which means uh, hometown, pretty much. And I thought that was Furuzato, because you a lot of times stuff adds the handakten at the end, but not in this case. Uh, I thought it definitely thought it was because we had another example with the Zato thing, which is the, the second country is exactly the same. I don't remember what that was now, but it did have the z. So I, w I was like, okay, so it's again, right? No, it's not. And the third one was... Uh, I keep forgetting the fucking third one. I'll put it up on the screen when I'm editing, because I'll have all the information. Uh, and the speech went fine, although I, I couldn't remember the whole thing. I wrote three and a half pages, so uh, memorizing it would... I mean, I didn't think I was going to be able to do that anyway. Um, I got... After the speech everyone had done their speech, everyone in the class got to vote on who they thought was the best. And uh, Gabriel, the American guy, uh, he got clearly, the, he clearly had the best speech actually, not in maybe content, because I thought mine was pretty good, if I do say so myself, but um, he memorized his whole speech, 100% down pat. No one it got even close to that. I think got um, maybe I got like 60% or something, 50, 60, and that was well, I was probably one of the better ones with that. But it was still wasn't near his level, and that's pretty much the most important thing in these. And the second most important is kind of like performance art, like if you draw stuff or show pictures and that kind of thing. I did, however, get two vote, two votes. I had no idea from who, but uh, that's nice. Uh, he got 14. Uh, then there were two people who got three votes one of them was uh, someone and the third uh, but the other one was interesting because it was someone who absolutely did not deserve points uh, she got she she just hold the, the paper up she held the paper up and just read it verbatim she never even tried to look at the people didn't try to remember uh, memorize a single syllable but she got three votes uh, I'm guessing I'm guessing it's because she's Chinese and she knows the three other uh, Three other, she knows three other Chinese people in the class. I think they just voted for her out of like a buddy vote or something. So she got the. There was like a 3,000 yen gift certificate and like a diploma for the winner. And there was some kind of package uh, prize thing. So just some kind of gift for uh, the shared number two. So I think if number two was just one person, I would I was going to be number three. Um, I would have got, gotten one. But this damn Chinese person uh, had to go and get uh, they got like a split second vote prize instead but I'm not bitter um, actually I just I mean I, I just wanted the speech thing to get over with anyway it wasn't really a thing you get graded on uh, so 
at least not now in class 3. So, next year will be class 4, and it won't be on in the mornings actually, I thought it was going to be, but it's not, it's still, it's going to be the same time as before, so still gonna start after lunch sometime and end in the afternoon. Going to class 4 also means that there's no more Minna no Hongo, which actually I like, because um, I'm sick of that book anyway. But the new book actually has some English in it, which is pretty cool. Um, I bought it that I bought that and the N3 kanji book that we're going to use next uh, semester already. So I don't have them with me here to Okinawa, but I have them. I have them at home so I can look at them and prepare a bit because this term that that was, I was I didn't prepare at all. I just went into every class and like, okay, let's see now what what kind of uh, grammar they're going to bring up. Um, so I just took it as it came, so to speak. But now I'm I'm prepared a bit. I'm going to prepare a bit, I mean. So yeah, after the school finished on Wednesday, uh, there was the Thursday, and then yesterday, no, not yesterday, on Friday, I went here to Okinawa. And uh, yesterday I spent uh, going around to two book-offs and one hard-off. Uh, no, two hard-offs, actually, because there was one station... Uh, Okinawa, by the way, has a monorail. Monorail, 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 monorail. I heard those things are awfully loud, but they actually fly as softly as a cloud. Uh, and there's not a chance the track would bend. Not in your life, my friend. I can't say Hindu because I don't think any Hindus are watching this. Anyway, um, monorails, pretty interesting. Uh, it feels a little dangerous because you like look out the window. There's just the distance between you and the ground, but it's still pretty cool. It doesn't go far enough along the island though. I, this beach that I'm at now is on the east side of the island and I had to take a 70 minute long bus ride to get here. And I think it's only really bus, long distance tourist bus or car to get to, to the other parts of the island. Island by the way is, I looked up, it's bigger than Sweden's Erland and it's uh, smaller than Gotland. So to all of you Swedish people watching this, that will give you a sense of the scale of Okinawa I guess. There's also a bunch of small islands. There's a small island called Himejima, I think, and that has a Swedish cafe. I actually wanted to go there, but um, first of all, there's like a the boat takes like three hours or something, and um, the woman who runs it, who actually went to the same um, weekend classes that I did in back in Sweden, she's in Sweden right now celebrating Christmas, which is, of course, makes it it's going to be closed, so I don't want, I, I didn't go there. Today is Sunday, of course, tomorrow, Monday, and then I have all, mo all Monday, Tuesday, and then a little bit of Saturday. I forget when the flight is. Um, Monday, I think I'm going to go to what's called Sekai something. I forget what the name was, but basically the area, the, the area of Naha where Yakuza 3 was based, which, uh, of course, I'm going to visit. I mean, come on. And then Tuesday, I have no idea what I'm going to do, actually. Um, possibly I might take uh, like a tourist bus somewhere and to, to go to, like, to the north side of the island or something uh, to see something new. Uh, also yesterday, I went to Shuri Castle. Shuri is the, also the end station of the monorail, and there's a big castle there. It's like on top of a big hill. It used to be like the, the fortress of Okinawa and where the king of the Ryukyu Islands used to govern and sit and everything. Um, because Ryukyu, uh, which is what the, uh, these islands are called, um, used to be a kingdom, an independent kingdom. I think it was sort of semi-governed by China, maybe, but then in 1800-something, Japan just took it over, and now it's Japan. And then, of course, America took it over by Second World War and had it for, like, the until the 1980s or something. Gave it back to Japan, and uh, now it's just Japan, even though Okinawa has, Okinawans have their own language and everything. But now I'm fucking rambling. I'm just happy to be here in Okinawa having a proper vacation for once, uh, even though, you know, being here is, is better than a vacation in Japan, I mean. Good times, good times. But I did uh, find some games yesterday, so... So, games. I went to two book-offs and two hard-offs, 
and one store that I didn't know existed, I uh, didn't didn't know existed. Uh, I was going to go. I, I was on my way to a hard off that actually didn't have jack shit. Um, well, it did have li- little Samson actually, but it was too expensive. Although it was the same price that I saw it at another place, uh, which was twenty two thousand yen. But that's still still a bit too much for my taste. Uh, at the bus stop w- where I got on to go where I was going, there came a an American guy and a Japanese girl who were betrothed fucking asshole um <laughs> he talked started talking to me and like asked me where i was from and stuff so we started talking and i mentioned games of course and he said something about a place called manga soko so i was like okay i don't know what that is but on the way to the heart of place um we were, uh, went past one so on the way back i stopped off there also and uh, it was a kind of like a big book of heart of type place although most of their games were really dirty like they had slightly less uh, prices, but the backsides of all the Super Nintendo cartridges pretty much were really, really yellow, like dark yellow. Also, they had this really fun thing that had like a pack of five Super Famicom games, and it was called like a Tanoshi Paku or something, uh, sold for like nothing, like 500 yen maybe. So five Super Famicom games, but you couldn't see which games there were. They had like the advertisement bit on top of the games, so. I didn't try and buy one, of course, but I'm pretty damn sure those were just, like, foot, J-League football games, parlor games, pachinko games, just the shit that they can't get rid of otherwise. So, yeah. Also, they had, like, this bin, which looks looked like a bargain bin or something, but they had fucking Turtles in Time in there. And it, was, it wasn't like it was a bargain price, either. It was 14,800 yen, which is ridiculous. I've seen it for... I bought it for, I don't know, 4,000, maybe? I don't know, but... Anyway, so in no particular order, these are the games. The least of my purchases were was Pokemon Green. Now, I am on the books as not caring pretty much at all about Pokemon, but um, and I already have Pokemon Red, but in English, I mean. But I got Pokemon Green just because it was 250 yen, and I've heard that the, the Japanese level of these games are really like entry level stuff. So I wanted to, I want to see what that entails and uh, how much I can understand and that kind of stuff so yeah. in the Game Boy family I got Tekken Advance for 950 Tekken Advance is actually pretty pretty decent for a handheld Tekken game that only has I guess four buttons with the LNR one Famicom game Ikari Warriors 3 which, unlike the others, is not a run-and-gun game. It's a kind of run-and-punch, I guess. Like a overhead beat-em-up uh, game. Which is weird that they would do that with a sequel. Like, take the guns away, <laughs> actually. Kind of like, figure a Contra game just switching to hand-to-hand combat all of a sudden. That would be strange, but that's what they did. But it's actually a pretty pretty good game, and I've... It was 1280, I think, and I've seen it for 2,500 and up. So it's like finally de- a decent price for that one. So three Mega Man games. The first one was a is a cheap one that's not higher on my list of priorities. It's Mega Man X Command Mission for PlayStation 2. It was 500 yen, so why not? And I've already I played it once. Uh, it was okay. Mega Man RPG, by the way. A decent game, but uh, the problem with it when I play it through is that it has nothing whatsoever to do with Sigma or anything like that. So it's a completely new story, which is, I guess, I guess good. But it, the only problem is that it feels like what you're doing doesn't matter at all. But it's a decent game <laughs> enough. It's for my Mega Man collection. So and then one that I've passed up many times since I got here, but now I finally said, "Fuck it, I'm getting it." It's shooting Rockman, shooting Star Operation, something or other. It's yes, Rockman X uh, operations to shooting up. Oh. Rockman X operate Rockman X operating. No, Rockman X operation shooting star. That's it. It's a crossover between Rockman X and Rockman Star Force. Although the game is play, the gameplay is entirely in Battle Network style. There's not no 3D battles like Star Force. Which is actually good, because this is more of a Rockman Nexus game than it is a Star Force game. Because I played the first Star Force game and I didn't think it was that good. It was definitely not much, not really an improvement of the Battle Network series, because the battle system actually got worse. Uh, less strategic, less 
cool, less of everything. If, and the story with a emo main character. But yeah, this is all Japanese, of course, but it'll be interesting to see what it uh, brings to the table. Last of the Mega Man games is a Mega Man game I actually kind of forgot about. Uh, it's Super Adventure Rockman, a game that was legendary to me in in the early days. I actually got it once when I didn't have a lot of money. I bought it for for Sega Saturn off uh, Swedish eBay, and I couldn't really afford to buy it, so I didn't want to keep it. So I like wanted to sell it immediately. But first, I ripped the the discs and printed my basically uh, reproduced the whole uh, case with the, uh, the covers and everything. It co printed with a color printer, so it, it looked pretty much like it should, but of course it only worked with emulator. Uh, but now I got the PlayStation PlayStation version, not the Sega Saturn, because I don't have a Sega Saturn, obviously. This is a game that's like a weird anime thing with uh, point the cursor shooting parts and the branch branching paths and stuff. It's a weird game, and it's not one Inafune had any hand in making, which is why he, hilariously enough, apologized for the existence of in the Rockman Complete Works uh, art book. So, uh, but it was also like a thousand yen cheaper than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be 3,500 or so, and it was 2,500, so why not? And, and one more PlayStation game. It's Bully, which, you know, I've played this several times, but for some reason I really felt like getting the Japanese version. Maybe play with a Japanese person to see what they think or something. Um, it's pretty much just uh, the Japanese version. Japanese subtitles, I assume. I don't think they voice acted this. Interestingly, uh, a couple of things that interest, inter are interesting. First, the fact that I bought it for 324 yen, and it does not it's not damaged or anything. Uh, it's usually 1,500 to 2,000 yen for some reason. Um, not even entirely sure. But um, the second thing is that it was published in Japan by Bethesda. Bethesda Softworks, a Zenimax media company. Like Bethesda? Are they even like big in Japan? I've seen Oblivion a couple times in the stores, but I didn't know that they existed in Japan. So I'm glad to find it at that price. And the last game is a sort of special case. It's this game, which is called something 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 Shubibiman. Shubibiman. Uh, zero. It was a game that was, it's a new game, released uh, this year or last year. And it's, um, I guess, made by Masaya, because Masaya used to make games back in the day also. Uh, it was a unreleased Satellaview game, a platformer, uh, two players and everything. Uh, but for Satellaview, obviously, those usually you can get with reproductions, but this is actually a real cartridge. Uh, but it was never released, so that's why. I mean, this, I think this is pretty much the only way you can play it, unless someone has already probably ripped the game, but of course I, I wanted it. The thing is, though, I got it for a good price at that new store that I didn't um, know, know about. Usually it's... It's, I've seen it for 6,000 yen, I've seen it for 5,000, I've seen it for 4,800 or something, but this one was 3,800. So definitely the best price I've seen yet, which is why I felt like, yeah, it's, this is probably the time to pick it up. Although, knowing my luck, probably next time I go to Yokohama or Tokyo, I'll probably see it for the same price or less even. Finally, the last thing, which is not a game, it's Yakuza 5 Strategy Guide. That kind of rhymes. But I didn't really buy it because I, I really wanted this guide. It's just I picked it off the shelf to look at it for whatever reason. I felt like it. But then I saw, felt something, a presence I've not felt since. And I checked. And it's a DVD called Story Ju Digest. History Digest DVD, it says. And so it's basically the, I assume, the story um, recaps from Yakuza 1, 2, 3, and 4. Which is right off of... Yakuza 5. You can access those if you have the game, but to have them on a DVD, I think it's actually good. Uh, because also when you do the uh, reminisce thing on Yakuza 3, 4, or 5, the one f when you look at 1 or 2, the resolution is so low that it, it's like a small screen within the, the big screen, which looks really fucking awkward. But on this DVD, I hope it's going to be full screen and everything. So yeah, this is going to be one monster fucking video, but... This week, the next last week of 
my first year in Japan is coming to an end soon. Tune in next week. Same Japan time, same Japan channel. And it's the next week is the last week ever for 2017. So see you then. And Merry Christmas.